Hey everyone, welcome to Talk Sustain to Me. In the last episode of the Sustainable Career Series, I made a video on how to pass the GARP SER exam. Today, we're going to talk about another well-known ESG professional certificate program, the Certificate in ESG Investing by the CFA Institute. I'm so excited to have Diana joining us today to share her experience of taking the ESG Investing exam. Diana is a recent graduate and a young professional who is now working as an ESG and sustainability consultant at a big four consulting firm in Hong Kong. Hi, Diana. Thanks for joining today and congrats for passing the exam. Hi, Natalie. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. Well, first of all, would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Like, what's your academic background or your work experience, especially in the field of sustainability? Yeah, so I'm an ESG consultant at PricewaterhouseCoopers in Hong Kong. I hold a bachelor's degree in environmental management and technology from HKUST, class of 2022. So it's been nearly two years since I first joined this firm. Um, before my journey with PwC, I had a few internship experiences in Hong Kong and Korea. Um, during my time at HQST, I once collaborated with my USD colleagues and developers from UChicago, where we kind of worked to develop and train this machine learning tool that could help analyze both textual and numerical ESG data so that we could ultimately provide better insights for investment decision makings. So that was very interesting. And um, I also had an internship experience at an ESG consulting firm in Korea. Yeah, that experience really kind of gave me a first-hand understanding of what it's like to work as an ESG consultant, and it's also precisely what I'm currently engaged at PwC. Um, you've worked for about a year as an ESG and sustainability consultant at the Big Four. So how's your current work so far? Can you share more about um, the work that you do? Yeah, so honestly, um, it's been a fulfilling journey so far. I tackle a wide range of responsibility for clients from diverse backgrounds. One aspect of my work is ESG strategy implementation. This involves communicating with clients um, to develop and execute strategies that integrate ESG aspects like net zero transition into their business operations. And ESG reporting is another key area of focus. I was actually involved in our very own 2023 ESG report, and it was such a rewarding experience to witness um, the stories of impact created by more than 25,000 people merging into one. So feel free to look into it. And um, reporting process actually covers a lot of the fundamental aspects like stakeholder engagement, materiality assessment, um, ESG data analysis, climate risk and opportunity assessment, TCFD scenario mapping, and of course, compliance with standards like GRI, SASB, ISSB, and Hong Kong Exchange. And another aspect of my work entails ESG data assurance that helps ensure data credibility, accuracy, and reliability. And the last part is helping clients identify the gaps and enhance ESG ratings. Um, overall, I'd say my work is very dynamic and multifaceted, but I feel very lucky to be able to do the work that I do in this generation. And it's really interesting to see how different industries are making different efforts to address climate change. And providing ESG advisory services means a lot to me because I truly believe that collective efforts can really drive a positive change and contribute to a more sustainable and inclusive future. Well, that sounds fantastic. And now let's focus on the CFA ESG investing program. Firstly, what motivated you to take the exam? Mm -hmm. The number one motive was that I wanted to deepen my understanding of ESG and enhance my ability to provide more comprehensive ESG advisory services to clients. And I think we both agree that ESG landscape is evolving very quickly. So I hope to stay at the forefront of the trends and of course the best practices. Great. 
So as far as I know, the exam syllabus covers a wide range of topics like ESG investing and the ESG market, the E, the S and the G factors, engagement and stewardship, ESG analysis, valuation and integration, ESG integrated portfolio construction and management, as well as investment mandates, portfolio analytics and client reporting. So could you share more about each of these topics? Yeah, of course. Um, and just FYI, this would be 2023 standard because I took it last year. Um, so CFA ESG includes nine chapters in total. In the first two chapters, we delve into the ESG market and discuss like the broader sustainability context along with global initiatives. So it kind of sets the foundation for understanding what the ESG market is. And moving on to chapters three, four, and five, we focus on the ESG factors themselves. We explore each of their characteristics, um, mega trends, and approaches at different levels, extending from um, company, sector, and country. So it's a comprehensive analysis for um, that helps us understand what how the ESG factors impact various dimensions in our lives. And then chapter six is on stewardship and engagement. And then on to chapters seven, eight, nine, uh, they are the densest and the most important, where we learn about the different approaches and tools that could help incorporate ESG aspects into investment strategies and how to effectively communicate these aspects to clients. And also about the different methods to analyze how ESG factors can affect industry and company performance, as well as security evaluation across various asset classes. I think overall, the exam covers a wide range of topics, giving us a comprehensive understanding of ESG and its applications in the investment industry. And are there any particular topics that you find the most interesting or maybe the most relevant to your work? I think chapters one to six were the most relevant to my work because they entail a lot of the fundamental aspects of ESG. Um, these chapters introduce a lot of the ESG frameworks and best practices, which I'm already quite familiar with. So I'd say I invested a significant amount of my time on the latter chapters on investment, um, valuation, analysis, and integration. Yeah. Great. We've just covered the exam topics, and now would you like to share more about the um, details of taking the exam? Like, um, after you pay and then register the exam, do you receive any mm -hmm. learning materials or other mock papers, etc.? <laughs> So once you have paid and registered for the exam, you will be given six months to prepare for the exam. And it's actually very flexible because you can make your booking at a later stage. And there are many, many time slots every day. Mm -hmm. So um, after registration, you will have access to the PDF version of the textbook and then self-assessment questions, a mock exam, and a learning ecosystem that shows you your percentile and study progress. Um, if you prefer a hard copy of the textbook, it's gonna cost around 140 USD, but I gather it depends on the vendor and whether if there's any additional charges for shipping. And for me, I had no issues with the PDF version, so it should be fine. And in terms of time, I would suggest 100 to 150 hours, but I think it really depends on your study, personal study habits and the level of familiarity with investment practices as well as ESG. So it's more important that you tailor your study plan based on your own needs. Great. Um, I think like personally, I've taken the GARP SER exam um, mm -hmm. last year the logistics of the exam is pretty much similar like mm -hmm. same as what you mentioned we firstly mm -hmm. pay and register an exam and then mm -hmm. we will have the access to the um, textbook of course it's mm -hmm. like also either online version or printed version and then there mm -hmm. will be some um, online quizzes for each chapter and a mock paper or a practice exam paper so it's also similarly it's a crown um, 100 hours of study so I would mm -hmm. say two exams are the content is different but 
the way to study is is pretty like similar. Mm -hmm. So far, did you find the exam difficult or challenging? Like, and do you think it's suitable for an absolute beginner with no finance, no ESG background, or is it more suitable for a candidate with um, at least a certain level of ESG skills? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say it was challenging because I had to work and study at the same time. So initially, I found it quite stressful to find the right balance. Um, so I ended up taking a study leave to just fully immerse myself into studying for this exam. And I think it was one of the best decisions I've made in 2023. Um, and for the second question, I think a lot of people uh, are actually curious to know that. Um, honestly, you might have to invest more time if you don't have any prior ESG knowledge or investment background. But I think CFA ESG is definitely approachable to everyone. Um, there's no entry criteria or whatsoever. And I myself, from an environmental degree with a minor in psychology, don't have an investment background. But I think that's what made the whole experience more fulfilling and enriching. So don't be afraid. Just um, take a chance. Yeah, that's great. And would mm -hmm. you would you recommend taking the exam? And mm -hmm. who do you think will benefit the most? Would it be students who are hoping to enter the ESG mm -hmm. industry or would it be professionals who are already um, working as a consultant? Like, who do you think will be most suitable candidate of this program? I think I would recommend this exam because the market is increasingly demanding ESG skills and knowledge, like globally speaking. So I would say CFA ESG helps you understand how ESG integration links to long-term value creation and how different financial industries like insurance firms, um, hedge funds, equity firms, investment banks are trying to address climate change in their own ways. So CFA ESG mainly focuses on ESG investing, that's true, but it also covers a wide range of topics and global trends which is relevant to any um, jobs within the ESG domain. So I think it's suitable for anyone working or aspiring to work in positions under consulting, wealth management, risk management, the list just goes on. Great. And finally, can you share some study tips on how you pass the exam? I think the most important resource for the exam preparation was the mock exam, which CFA does make available to you once you complete the payment. Uh, definitely go through the mock exams like several times so you can be familiar with the structure and expected questions. Um, definitely invest more time on chapter seven, eight, nine because they are the densest and the most important. At the end of the day, I think um, it really depends on your personal study habits, but I recommend dividing your study periods into manageable, focused portions so that you don't get too stressed out close to the deadline. You shared a lot of informative, very helpful content about the exam. Um, so we've talked about the exam curriculum, um, the details of taking the exam, the level of um, difficulty, and some very helpful study tips. So thanks a lot, Diana. And again, congrats for passing the exam. <laughs> I believe like what you learn from this program will be applied to mm -hmm. your consulting work. And then through your work, you will be able to help your clients, your corporate clients make better, more sustainable business decisions. Yeah. So for audience, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below or reach out to us on LinkedIn. Hope you find this video helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Thank you so much.